Hi folks, a uh, good start to the day, I sold a painting on Etsy, <clears throat> this one, at Bosham, Bosham Harbour, Bosham Harbour, but when I looked at it, I noticed that there was a, a line around here, and down here, where this had faded to light, lighter blue, and this was still an ochre colour, and what I'd done, I'd stored it flat, with all my pile of Etsy paintings for sale but because this is slightly wider than the, most of the others it's stuck out so for two or three months that it's been in the pile it must have faded with the sun because it's underneath a, a south facing Velux window, loft window and it must have faded, nothing else has faded but this one, but I don't know when I did it, I can't find it on YouTube so it might even be pre-YouTube uh, so I don't know, but as far as I know the colours I use are pretty light fast but this is sort of bleached, I don't, I don't know whether this blue was through the painting or the yellow was through the painting with a nice um, evening light or morning light but anyway what I'm going to, I've had to uh, refund the money through Etsy which is a bit of a downer considering I just spent quite a bit of money on art material uh, so there we are, so lesson learned. So now I'm keeping all my paintings for Etsy underneath a piece of, uh, piece of MDF so that the, that the sun doesn't get to it. But this one I'm going to leave out to see if that uh, fades. If so, I'll offer it up to, for sale again. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to put my palette in the cadmium yellow pile. I've got a lot of colours on here, I won't use them all on because I think I'm going to do a snow scene. Because it might be nice and, well not nice, it's, the weather's lousy at the moment for summer, but it should be summer, but uh, it, will, it will be winter in the southern hemisphere, so somebody will appreciate it. The painting I've just shown you uh, was uh, going to Australia, so the postage is quite considerable, it's about £30. But the board itself is uh, pretty heavy, it's on 5mm MDF. I don't use that or hardwood anymore. Great surfaces if you're not going to sell them and you don't mind them falling off your wall with the weight of them in a frame. <coughs> but the MDF, the 2mm MDF is a superb stuff, but I'm using watercolour paper at the moment. I bought 100 sheets of this uh, Fabriano for my studio watercolours, but it's a good cheap surface to paint acrylics on. And being a third uh, wood pulp, uh, not wood pulp, but linen, it should be durable. But it's got two coats of a coat on either side, and I've got it upside down, uh, of uh, PVA glue and burnt sienna. Look, I'm going to give that a bit of a dry. It's still a little bit damp. But it seals the surface, it makes a plastic coating on the surface because acrylic is plastic. But you know that. Oh, well, there we are. So what we've got in here, cadmium yellow, pale, medium, deep, yellow ochre, vermilion, cadmium red, uh, lizarin, uh, ultramarine black, burnt umber, burnt sienna and some viridian. So I don't usually have 12 colours out, but uh, if I use them, I use them. If I don't, I don't. But I just want to just give that a final try. So just fast forward, I should have done this first, but I wanted to share my tale of woe. So headphones off, go. Okay. I'm going to work this up from a winter scene that I've painted in watercolour, or line and wash I think. Uh, so it will be quite washed out with the sky light blue. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and I'm using the, uh, I don't know, a number of you are buying it now. I'm starting to look for it. Somebody got, a, got, a, got some on eBay with free postage. I paid £7 for the postage from the UK to UK. Look, that's the uh, 
agriculture, agri vet gel. It's the stuff that the vets put up there on their gloved arms to go into cattle. It slides easy, like a, I suppose, a veterinary KY jelly, similar to the stuff you have in hospital. Otherwise, other than this is a blue tint, but it disappears when you put it on the paper. But I'm, I'm not going to use it on white paper mostly. It'd be on primed colour burnt sienna, or I was even thinking of doing it on black. You, whatever, whatever you fancy. I'm just going to put some more in there. Yeah, I've got some VO5 that I got. This is a hair gel I got from uh, Super Drug, and that was a fiver. And this is only about eight pounds off a gallon. Amazing value. I'll show you the uh, can, so that in case you want to buy it, there you go. That's the can. Look at that one. I'll give you a close up. There we are. It's, it's available on, available on eBay, with or without post, free post and package. Uh, but it's uh, I'm really enjoying using it. So I'm going to I'm going to paint the sky and superimpose the trees and stuff, the winter trees over that. So I'm going to use my big brush here, big inch number twelve long flat, really lovely brush by uh, Georgian Taylor Rowley. So it's a it's a bristle, pure bristle. Lovely, lovely, lovely one. Uh, but be careful you don't let the paint dry on your brush. I'm not using any water, straight in with the bit of white, bit of blue, bit of, bit of black, plenty of white, lump of gel. I'm going to just go for it. I like black, it's a great shortcut and as usual I don't aim for a finish until towards the end. I'm just putting on some covering colour really. I'll put a bit of blue, it's light, light blue. And yeah, I'm right down low horizon for this, mostly sky. Don't use too much gel at one time because it will thin it down, obviously. But look at that. That would be hard to do with uh, PVA glue. I'll have some warmth in the sky. Oh, I'm devastated about that painting. Not just for the money lost, but for the customer who took the trouble to, to pay for it. To find that he can't have it. But we'll see what happens to it. So a few days in the sunlight to fade the rest of it. Or in the hot sun if we get any. I don't know, last weekend it was pretty ropey. Monday we got uh, storms and all sorts in the south. And not even skies to paint, they're just pure grey. And the thunderstorm is expected today. Great day. Middle of June coming up. You don't get much of a spring, you don't get a summer. But as artists, we can paint. We can paint them, can't we? Like I'm painting this in a, in a so called summer. You can thicken up your strokes afterwards. Let's clean that and then we'll go in with some bit of, bit of oak, a bit of, bit of warmer cloud colour. Because it'll be a bright, sort of sunny day in the snow. A um, bit of yellow ochre, touch of cad red, plenty of white, a bit of medium. A bit more warm in there, I think. Well, I probably have to read my words. Putting all these colours on it does make for confusion. Because they're there, you think you have to use them. But no. See, all the time building up sort of an impasto on the impasto. It's primed with uh, some chalk. 
which is a very very good gesso, makes a good gesso. Had some through the rambling rows this morning before all this and met my wife out. She's the gardener. I sky up here all the time with my paints, pretend I'm working. Right, I'll put some snow in. Now snow is going to have some sort of shadow in it. So we'll uh, Just scumble it in, just just to cover the the paper. Cobalt's a good colour, but I don't use it. I use ultramarine. So we have a bit of a hill coming down there, and a bit of a pathway through there. Hmm, my brush is sliding around this bit, it's uh, like an uh, ultrasound on a tummy. A little noise outside builders doing a big extension or oh, an orange root, those of my neighbour's back of his house. Okay, so there's, a, there's a base. <clears throat> My premium trial with malware bites is. I don't pay for any security on here. Got a lot of it, but all the free stuff. <coughs> right. So this uh, this rose went everywhere. It was going under some tiles on the low low roof. Though like a slight addition uh, to the back. And. Um, it's going all over the place, around the corner, up the side of the fence, into the neighbour's garden. So we leave that bit for them because it's a beautiful white rose. And last week it was just smothered with hundreds of, of wonderful roses. Could hardly see out of our sliding doors. And they say, if you want your roses pruned properly, ask your worst enemy to do it. Because then they'll be pruned right. So while I was the enemy this morning, I sharpened up some secateurs and I set two and I massacred it. But now next year, it will be fantastic. Just going to pull that tight. There, there is a bit of moisture in the, in the paper because of the water in the acrylic, but uh, I just put it flat. These things you can be mounted behind glass but as a watercolour, provided they're flat, they're not too buckly. Or you can stick them to a piece of MDF with PVA glue, put a bit of pressure on it and just hold them flat on the, on the board. And they will, now that is, that is they're still, still wet. Look. If that was PVA glue, that would have been dry by now. But I'm not going to go over it. If you go over it at the wrong time, your top coat will lift, lift off the undercoat, so to speak. So good to have a have a little uh, look at it and decide what I'm going to do. I'm sure you'd like to see what I'm copying, so I'll show you. I'm not copying. I'm just going to do a version of it. But quite tricky. It's, oh. That's me reflecting. There we are. That's the one. Sorry about me in the way. But it's just the base. I only use them as a as a uh, aid as a, an aid memoir. Aid memoir. <coughs> but I'm not ready to go even near that landscape yet. Now that's more. It's a little bit bit dry. I'll just leave it a few more seconds. Think of anything, any answers to questions that you might have. Uh, but I'll talk about Etsy. A lot of, a lot of artists or people who are creating, create jewellery, fabrics, antiques, painting, of course, fine art. 
and it doesn't cost them, they don't take a, a very much commission, it's a very, very well organised site, they're really up to scratch and I've been delighted with them but I haven't sold many lately but I sold quite a few when I first started, they went quiet. That's what, probably why I'm so disappointed about this morning, like a waste of time, waste of their time, my time. But I just hope it'll come back. Right, so. oh, we'll see. Uh, I've, I put. Oh yeah, I said I put some chalk in. I'll show you the chalk in case you haven't seen a demonstration of mine before. It's just this um, chalk line, chalk for chalk line, white. It's a lovely quality, very fine. And it makes a lovely gesso. And the more you use, of course, the more tooth you will get in your. Paper. But if you if you want to, to build up a heavy impasto before you even paint, you can use texture paste, which is quite expensive, I must say. I used to use a lot of, I used to buy litres of it from uh, Spectacrill. I think they're involved with Masters and so stay back palettes, but they, Spectacrill Spectrum colours are manufactured here, not far from here, where they were when I was buying them, the artist quality, they were very, very lovely and they came in big pots, they were for professional use really. And I, I had them lounging on my bookcase for, for four years before I, either they went rotten or I used them. But they were very, very good. As, as you know, buying art materials is quite expensive. That's why I'm on Patreon, folks, to help pay for this and make a bit on the side. Uh, right, let's uh, go back to that sky. We'll put in a bit more blue, a bit of white. So have a bit of bit of alizarin in there, pinch of white, I'll mix a bit of bit of the old gel. See that gives a lovely lovely look to the sky this uh, with a touch of ultramarine with with a, a touch of alizarin with the ultramarine. Get a nice sort of cloudy Gentle cloudy effect. So I'm just filling in the gaps now. I don't use a lot of uh, alizarin, but whenever I do, my cousin Mimi Usher, who you'll see on Facebook, she lives in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, and she's a great, she's been a great uh, encourager over the years. She's got many of my paintings. I'm sort of liking putting a ochery clouds in in these paintings to make a sort of what, we call a, what I would call a, a complicated sky in, in that there are lots of things going on. Quite impressionist. This one's quite delicate. But I want that light on that horizon to counter-change against my trees. There we go, look. It's coming on, we can go a bit darker with uh, the ultramarine and the crimson. That's gel. A bit darker, I think. So it's sort of a lilac-y colour, but having said that, my lilac in the garden is white. So I don't know why they call it a lilac, they call it a white. Okay, now we've, we've got enough dark coming on that sky, although it is essentially light, it's relatively dark compared to what I'm gonna, going to superimpose on it. Let's put a bit of dark over the top here. So that makes the lights look even lighter when I put them on. I've got some orange out here. Shall I use it? Put a bit of ochre.
Right, it's snowy morning, eh? More ochre in there. I think the thing with clouds is that there's a danger of repetition, which we don't like. Like repeating yourself, thinking that that was good, and then doing another one of it. Now that's quite good, I'm quite... Put a bit of more light in there. Clean the brush. Right, so this there's my sky. <coughs> How difficult was that? We've got enough, I think we've got enough cloud, blue, lilac-y cloud to counter-change against the light. That's the whole idea, idea of painting, is light against art. And I'm talking about figurative, figurative painting, representational fine art, as a, distinct from uh, abstracts, which I like. I like doing them myself when I come up to an impasse with the with the landscapes, do an abstract. I love Sean, Sean Scully and I, I I brought him to your attention but most of you probably know him but he's not very well known in, in the UK where he was brought up and born in Ireland, lived in London and got a scholarship in America and been there ever since. Um, an extremely successful abstract painter uh, but I love what he does. It just, it just make, uh, makes bells go off in my head. Now, the trees. This is where the blue and the black are going to come in very useful. Now he's talked to Starseed, that's great, isn't it? I'm just trying to do a demo. Right, brush. I can put warm stuff in this. Let's have a bit of a hill there. Let's have a bit of sienna in there. So warm it up a little bit. Try and get pleasant shapes on your trees. You can put a bit of detail in afterwards. I'll put some greens in there. I went going over the hill. So more blue, a bit of white. No gel on this. Now we're coming out the other side. Oh, it's lovely this is, isn't it? Oh, you love a work. Probably, as all us layabouts uh, sitting in our studios painting. That nice hill there. Plenty of air in these. Some bits and pieces, a bit of warm here and there. All right, let's put in some snow on there. Let's see where we go. I'll, I'll put in some ivy and stuff, sort of creepers, stuff climbing up, and, and, and some evergreens. I don't want it all uh, this colour. Uh, right, okay, so. White, grey, sky colour. Bit of gel. Now I'll put that on my white and it, went, and it looks slightly blue but it soon disappears. I think it is painted blue, and I'm only surmising, uh, because, or to, not because, but to to distinguish it from the hospital, like the human version of it. 
Oh, that's a bit of darker stuff in there. Oh, no, not orange. But this one. I think I, I put the orange out. Thinking I might do a, a sort of a sunset here. And I want some dark, some dark there. So I can put in some light over there. Right, let's just go back onto there now with some greens. Black, yellow, bit of red. Yeah, I love this brush, it's all worn out. Yeah, this is where you can use your artistic license. You put in what, what you want. This is sort of abstract impressionism. Oh, what's snow there? Going over the hill. Okay. I'll uh, reinstate the hill. Uh, let's do the same. The size, the blue in this. I like red with my dark greens. I can put it, I can put some trees coming uh, down the hill a little bit. Bit there. Uh, have to establish a light source on there. Right, let's go back with the uh, some uh, snow, snow reflecting. The sky, what's above it? And I think the light coming from the from the left, if I remember. Just picking up some of this here. So I'll put something in there to justify that shadow. So we're sort of modelling the snow, we're putting light where it should be light and, and darker, not dark, but dark earth where you've got the highlights where the snow is catching that ochre tint from the sky. Um, most of that being shadow there, so let's uh, do a shadowy colour. Not sure about that, I'll need that to disappear over the hill, don't I? So I'm catching a bit of light. Paint 
Now we want shadow here. See how quickly you can adjust with um, with acrylic. That will be the shadow. And we're coming into the bit of light now. And a bit of a bit of dark shadow. Suggestions now. We go back in those trees. That orange is there, so I'll. Uh, use it. snow back over some of that. Let's try. Line up some of that. Make it look snowy. Red always goes down well with a, or a warm colour, just, uh, just add something. Don't look too much there. Give me some of that Try to avoid that sort of thing. I'm not going to leave it. So we're coming up the slope. We've put a bit of a furrow down. And then that side of the path, and we'll counter change. So we come out of the light into this. Bit here, so let's mix up a nice thick bit here. Bend that. I use that orange there. No? Not very good. We can refine this in a minute. It's a bit rough. Just 
pen goes up here, if I can. It's just too hard. Into that to the shadow. Just red and blue. I can't show you the palette because it's just too difficult. So just show up a build up of snow. Right, we'll put in some uh, in here. So they've walked along there, left their footprints in the snow. Not a great example, I must admit. So I want this here light to show that it's coming out of the uh, shadow of the path. I don't have to do that, I have to show more dark behind it. Something like that. It's just a sort of a creamy colour. Now we want some, uh, some bit, bits of grass sticking up, so a bit of amber and a bit of, bit of, bit of ochre. Lovely brush this. Does all sorts of nice things. Just sticking their heads above the parapet, blades of grass. Okay, let's do a bit of detail now. Uh, want some uh, trunks, blue. Let's see what that looks like. Probably a little bit of black in there, I think would be better. So you can do that with a finger because it's dry, more or less, behind. Start here. Darker. Bit of water. There's plenty of water on your brush to do this, otherwise it won't come off the brush. I'll put some white bits in here. Or whitish. Oakery.
Uh, there's not enough water. Okay. Uh, so we've got a uh, cool, cool, warming up bit of warm here. It's very easy to do too much of this. I've lost my picture. Oh, not that I'm using it. Right, now it's carefully, I'm going to get a small brush. <clears throat> uh, short brush on. Oh, well, I've got one here. That's a. Oh, no. Well, my friend Alan Owen sent me. <coughs> if you want to learn all the basics of watercolour painting, well, there's me, of course, and, and there's Stephen Cronin. And Alan Owen, we all paint. Uh, we say it's simple, but it is not, is it? We just right. Uh, I want I want a bit of uh, some bit of alizarin so that it shows. Uh, coming up here, that's pretty near. A nice big coat on. Let's have some uh, jeans. Oh, his head's just a little bit small. I think we've got this foot up. Okay, that's one. Let's have another one. Bit of grey. Oh, this is That's Bruce Companion. Let's have a bit of bluey grey. Oh, potholes, foot, foot, footprints. Okay, I don't think there's much I want to do to that now, so give it a signature. I'll put a mount on it, we'll have a Have a look at it. Uh, bit, bit of shadow behind there. Okay, I'll put it in the mount. I've had enough of this one now. It is a demonstration, as quickly as I can do it. Uh, I've got this lovely double mount that was cut for a, a slightly larger sheet of paper, so I'm going to... Uh, Oh, 
Well, there we are. So uh, that is a focal point. We could go. That's another one. But the rest is just a just a made-up landscape. And I'll just raise up the, uh, or the zoom out. All right, let's just lift it up right up so that you can get a good good view of it. Well, there we are. Oh, that looks quite good. A couple of little uh, cloud breaks there. A bit of light coming through. Uh, well, I think my little valley going up here looks okay. Provided you realise it is a valley, little, like a a trough in in, in the cut in the land. Uh, right. Well, look at that. That's uploaded. Thanks for watching guys, see you soon, bye bye.